everybody, welcome to the show. I'm Ted Stryker, so excited to have my guests here. They've sold over 10 million records. They've been successful for 20 years. It's the Sweet 16 of their debut album, The All-American Rejects. Guys, <laughs> great to see you. We hey. are here. For all these years, as I mentioned, at the Open, maybe it can't happen in one sentence, but Nick, how the career has gone, is it how you expected? I mean, no. I mean, it's, I don't think you ever expect something like this to happen. I mean, we just kept doing what we do, and oops. There were definitely <laughs> happened moments. Happened again a couple times, I guess. There were definitely moments where we were frightened beyond belief. I remember after the first record, I remember I was like, oh crap, I only have enough money to go to college for a year. <laughs> and I was like, all I had in my mind cycling was like, just get a good job at Blockbuster. That seems like a sweet job. And then we wrote Move Along, and... I remember you kept saying that. I remember, that. I was like, like it was like a through, mantra. It's like, dude... We were writing Move Along, and you were like... One year of college? I should just get a job at Blockbuster. <laughs> or make a nice, smart investment with my, with my one year's worth of college tuition. <laughs> play it all on black, and then go work at Blockbuster. But the second record, Move Along, huge, huge, huge. But the first one did well. Yeah, no. The first one did really well, and that happened. That one had an old romantic story, you know, like where the band. This is before all the connectivity. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there was some. There's something that we treasure about the first record too. I mean, we were, you know, little kids from Oklahoma, uh, teenagers from Oklahoma. That, yeah, we got played on K Rock. I remember that was like, there was a guy named Lynn Barstow in uh, Tulsa, right? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. He picked our record up. Uh, Somehow through like a local radio station, was it the Spy at Stillwater? Maybe. And um, and then he started playing it, and that literally it it had this old sort of uh, evolution where it went from Tulsa to Dallas, and then all of a sudden they picked it up in L.A., and all of a sudden, you know, all these kids are flying across the country talking to big record labels, not just Doghouse. So. So yeah. you guys grew up. Not necessarily you grew from six feet to six two, but mentally you grew up in front of people. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah I always say we grew up in front of the record button. Okay. I mean, you got like a diary from a 17-year-old all the way to 26, and then musically trying to find ourselves and losing ourselves again. It's been it's been a really great like journey all you know throughout teenage to I guess young adult.
It's the Sweet 16 of your debut album. Congratulations on Thank that. You. Yeah. Um, we talked about Swing Swing, and I want to move throughout your career and get to our present here. But 2005 is when Move Along came out. Nick, did you feel any pressure from anyone in the world that you had to deliver something? Or was it still like the, still the free will and we're just four young dudes where you kind of feel lucky to be here type mentality? Yes to both of those. I think at that point, we were still, I mean, really young. I don't even think you had turned 21 yet. So at this wow. point, and we were writing our second record. Um, I think the pressure we felt the most was from ourselves. Yes. Um, there were I mean, many we're, nights. Yeah, we were very, very just hard on ourselves. And like re we really wanted to make ourselves proud first and foremost. And I think after about nine months of literally doing nothing but writing music, I think then we lost perspective and then other people started pressuring us. So. <laughs> yeah. And then it took us staying in a squat house pretty much in Atlanta for eight weeks solid. And in that eight weeks, Dirty Little Secret came, It Ends yes. Tonight came, and Move Along came. Three huge songs from that album. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Our, th our three first top 15. Top 10. Top 10 jams. Um, and they all came under this giant pressure of like, don't fuck this up, yeah. <laughs> which is so surreal to me because like, any t I don't, I, as a writer, anytime you you not only you pressure yourself but you have outside pressure, it's so hard to find the creative flow of any kind and to speak the truth about anything uh, that we held ourselves up so tightly in that Atlanta bungalow of garbage. And we live just like hand to mouth. That's a funny thing, funniest thing. Like we, we live just, I think all our rooms for the eight weeks were like 375 bucks a piece. Wow. Um, and, I was, and then looking back, I'm literally like, why the fuck did we do that? <laughs> like I remember when we're, we're, this is like touring move along, uh, not to digress, <laughs> but we're in Paris and we're staying in a hostel. Yeah. And, we're, yeah. and then yeah. and Nick and I, I rolled over to Nick. I was like, yo man, like let's, let's get like a room at the Ritz like one time. Like, yeah. and, and we did. And I remember we were like, we're like, wow, yeah. this is neat. But we, no, yeah, we, we, we never we, had. We would only splurge on one room though. Like three yeah. or four of us went and shared a room like across from the Louvre or something. Yeah, we're like, yeah, this, I is, this is how you yeah, do it. Yeah. We're like, we squatted at the Louvre, for a, by, right by the Louvre at the one Ritz. One night. Yeah, yeah exactly. we had a really bad taste for Europe after the first record because all we stayed in were the worst, filthiest, there's, horrible places. There was a bee inf infestation in a room in London. Bees and in bees. your room, man. <laughs> you got bees. It's a great sign of a great manager. Right. That's what that is. <laughs> Just pinch and pennies, man. <laughs>
that album, the Move Along album, 84 weeks, it was like in, in the top 100, over 3 million records sold just for that album. Yeah. Um, and we talked about how you were staying in not the best conditions in Atlanta, but the songwriting and the recording process for that record, I don't want to talk about how it comes together now, for that, oh. how'd you guys do it? Uh, like for Dirty, Dirty Little Secret, how, how'd that thing come together? That was a country sounding song, acoustic. It was the yeah, weirdest. It had a swing feel originally, yeah. Yeah, it was like ding, 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 ding. Like, could you imagine? <laughs> like, I don't know. It's like, it's not even, I can't even. I, I remember yeah, we, like. We almost went to Americana. I, yeah, I, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> we would have been so in front of it. Yeah. Uh, no, but it just sounded silly until we put it on its legs in the Atlanta rehearsal space. And I forget. Or it was even after that. I think that was like the most significant thing Howard Benson, who produced that record, did for that whole record mm -hmm. was he goes, quit trying to be clever and just play it. <laughs> yeah, and we totally. sat there and just played it as straightforward rock song as it could be. And that's what it became. And it was like, did you say quit being clever? Yeah. That's, right. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. Yeah, I remember when we were even playing those songs in the studio to like you to get the rough tracks as a guide for all the layering that we did with Howard Benson. There's like a thousand tracks on every one of those songs. It sounds like a giant wall. Um, I remember that uh, he he basically just the 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 engineer Mike. Uh, what was it, Mike Alexander? Mike Plotnikoff. Yeah, yeah. He was like. There was apparent like I remember he didn't tell me this till the last like couple of days of recording, but they were voice. like, they were like, we don't, we didn't really get this record at all. Like they're <laughs> like, I remember they were like, they were kind of head scratched, like what the fuck, what, what are these guys recording? And uh, and even even us, I remember that first day, I remember being so defeated when we were all trying to get through the music that we we practiced this shit eight weeks in a oh, row, mm -hmm. and we're like, man, we really got something going, man. Like, we, we were so cross-eyed about not having the tunes. And then we played a show in Charlottesville that was our first one out. And it was Dirty Little Secret, Move Along. We're like, just stick to the swing swing, that whole first record, because God knows what a new record feels like when these kids just, all they want is swing swing. And I remember it did nothing for our confidence mm. because we played Dirty and everybody was just standing and listening. And then the rest of the other songs, it was like, yeah, we're, angsty kids and so we were so frightened coming off that I remember coming off that stage we're like we played move along last and everybody was just like yeah and we were just like oh huh. yeah it's kind oh, of funny because we were so used to being the band where every song is a new song you know we played so many shows before our first record even came out and ev literally every song was a new song but to then have that record come out and you know get as lucky as we did and get to you know actually have a song on the radio, blah, blah, whatever, come back and put out a record and then play a new song again. It was, it was a trip. Yeah, no, nobody knows what's going on until it's done. Like, even when it's done, it's like, especially, I mean, now in today's world, yeah. I bet it's really hard to, like, pick whether or not it's going to be the song selling the song or this celebrity persona that just f thrusts itself onto every station and it's like we all absorb it it's such a different world now than when move along even came out because that was a cream only like thing but now you know with youtube and with all this other stuff it's so surreal to see what drives the music and ultimately the only thing that this band ever had going for it was the songs drove everything for us please just don't play with Hey! 
Tyson, I heard you say, I think it was recently, welcome to the All-American Rejects. Finally. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was a teaser that? for Sweat video. Okay, that about we a did. year ago the, or so. Yeah, we did a short film that we released with the Rejects. Uh, it was, Sweat was the first song that was up, and the second song was Close Your Eyes. And it was a personified analogy to me of the band's career. Mm. This identity crisis, this... Um, the fact that we, we never really know who we are uh, from one moment to the next. And so I felt like that, that was like the first moment where I was like, ah, oh, this is the rejects, man. Yeah. This is us, like this lost uh, artist that is always trying to find themselves for better or for worse, you know. We did a record called Kids in the Street after that when the world comes down. <laughs> you That's, skipped over that one. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not, not trying. I want to go back because I think it's important. It is. Because, let's, let's talk about that. Because as, as artists, I think we, we were trying to find ourselves so desperately with mm -hmm. that record. Maybe too hard. Um, and if you listen to our records, you can hear us grow up. And there's a sort of a weird way where we've ended with Sweat and Close Your Eyes. And I think there's kind of promise in those songs.
Son of tales strangle me. I can't explain myself at all. All it wants, all it needs, all I don't want to need at all. Whilst I breathe, my time we. Darkness 
Just a little inside What made this right It's too late to fight Good things tonight Yeah, it's where darkness is your life Good things tonight Good things tonight So little inside What made this right It's too late to fight play shows in front of your fans now, who I guess an 18 year old, maybe like 35, which is still super young, and maybe they've got their 10 year old with them who are singing the songs. Is it a great feeling to see a new generation singing these songs? Are you earning new fans? What is it like playing the shows these days? I mean, it's interesting because it feels like that first couple rows has never changed age wise. <sighs> and that's, That's a pretty cool. awesome thing. That means yeah. there's new blood constantly coming. And it's kind of a thing that you take for granted because it just seems like, oh, that's the way it always, always is. Mm -hmm. And then you think back, you're like, no, that kid either wasn't born <laughs> or was extremely <laughs> young when we started out. So it's very nice to have that mix now. And like, as the crowd goes back further to the back, you see the older people in the back and it's- Some of whom have kids on shoulders, like mm -hmm. little kids, and that's awesome. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about Send Her to Heaven. I want to know about this song. I remember it was the first, it's really only like the second time we ever set up as a live band to record a song. There's a chaotic energy within it um, that capturing it live, there's a looseness that I think made it really nice. But lyrically, it's about, uh, I don't know, it's about, a, it's about a screw up. It's about somebody who like burns, burns white hot and ultimately doesn't survive her lifestyle. It's about a girl named Molly. But for us, it's like, it's, it's a dirty rock song. It reminds me a lot of sort of like where we left off with, uh, we had a song called, um, that kicked off our fourth record called, um, <laughs> help me out, Mike. Some Days Gone. Some Days Gone. Um, and it was just kind of loose and dangerous and unafraid. And this song to me feels like that too. Nice. It's not locked into some sort of sheen. a girl who had it all when Molly was her name. Friday night she had a ball. She liked to drink Sienna Red Law. Molly won't stop until it's all gone.
to be a baseball star. I always felt you guys had your heads on straight with an incredible work ethic. Not that you went crazy, it didn't go crazy at yeah, times yeah. With, with excess, but always delivering. No, I think it was a whole wild ride all, for everything. Every, every time we went to get a record going, it was all business because it was, it was really the only truth we got to like throw out in between 24 to 28 months of just madness. I mean, that excess alone of the touring really was such a, I mean, it was, it was really, people don't tour like that anymore unless they're very comfortable. And we just road dog the shit out of it. Mm. Um, but, you know, looking back, it was, I, I don't think we would have done it any other way because I don't think we would have known any other way to do it. Mm -hmm. I you know, that. I think we we only lived this band for so long. Um, the first three records, especially, it was two on, two off, two on, two off. And when you're growing up, uh, you're you're literally cutting your teeth out on the road. You know, it's a to to have done it successfully and to like still be here is a gift. But also, the fact that we never short uh, short changed the writing. Well, then you guys came back with, I guess, on the third record, Gives You Hell. And this is a song, by the way, that I still play on the radio so often. I mean, I play like three All-American Reject songs quite often on the radio, but Gives You Hell is one. People still request it on my All Request mm. Hour on yeah. Friday. They still awesome. love it. What is one thing about that song, when I just mention the title, anyone can take this, that you think of when I say that? A struggle making it, fun song, you made it in, in one hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember it, it, came, it came together weird. Did it? It wasn't yeah. easy. It was just weird. It was just and weird. Then, I think, yeah, we'd never written a song like that. Yeah. And then, you know, we were, you know, it's one of those, it's this, the classic story of like, oh, we didn't want to put it on the record. You know, we were scared of it, whatever. Mm. And then it turned out to be what it was. Um, it was definitely one of those songs. Definitely afraid of it. Yeah. Definitely had lost perspective on whether or not it was good. Mm. I, I always have to interject at this point. Because there was a point when we were recording, we recorded that record for so long. It was ridiculous. <laughs> and yeah. uh, all the tape, we're like, let's do it all the old way. Yeah. Sorry. But there was a point, well, that song in particular, I can still remember being in a hotel room on the road when they played me the demo for the first time. And I was where like, was that? Oh. I don't remember this. I don't remember where, but I can see the room. Like, I can see the <laughs> moment. What does it smell like in there? <laughs> we'll bring it back. We'll Probably was not a sensory memory. <laughs> but uh, like that moment, I was like, this is fucking great song like I knew it at that that time and then so we made the record and it was like way later and I think at that point when we were wrapping up the record I think I'd gone home and there's just like a few things left to do and you guys are there still and that's when you guys are having the doubts and had I been there I would have been like there's no doubts like this is like I don't know to me that song was always like this is undeniable like I always felt it these guys and it feels as fresh as ever Hmm. As fresh as ever. That's, that's good. We've always sort of had this identity crisis about being this, we're kind of this bastard pop band, rock. Like that's where rock falls. How would you describe the All American Rejects? People would probably say, oh, that song, or like pop band rock thing. <laughs> and I think we've always battled that identity because coming out with Gives You Hell, I remember we were, we've always been like, you know, Swing Swing was proven on rock radio, yes. Move Along, all that stuff. We've yes. always been like this, this determined rock band to, to, to sort of, I don't know, like we always, we always fancied ourselves a rock band. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then we won a VMA for Move Along, and, and that was like this crux moment where we couldn't be a rock band to save our lives after that because we were ingrained in this pop culture moment. We had Dirty Little Secret, the video. It was video. best rock video. Though. It was it was best rock <laughs> video. That's right, we beat the Chili Peppers. <laughs> that was a surreal thing because Gives You Hell now is recurrent on the rock radio. I wake up every evening with a big smile on my face and I never feel out of place. You're still be lovely working. Yeah. 
tripping it fins loud Where's that shiny car? And did it ever get you far? Never see so tinsel I never see a fall so tonight looking back though nick um working with a major label of course they were there helping you but is there like anything you look back on you're like you know what it wasn't that great of an experience or overall it was good i mean in hindsight in 15 years there's a lot that was great a lot that like i'd do that different or um you know i'd change this or that but i mean it, it, it's like you were asking earlier i think I, I don't really think we could expect this to go any either way. Um, I think we just kept getting lucky. And I think especially early on, just really being disciplined and really hard on ourselves and being the band who, yes, got to, you know, be wined and dined and, you know, taken out by all these major labels and stuff, but also being the band that insisted that we all live together when we make a record, insisted that we all get in a rehearsal space and be very well rehearsed when we go in. I think, I mean, I think there's something to be said about the success of those albums coming, you know, coming at least somewhat from the way that we approached them. Yes. Guys, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for yeah. having us, man. Thanks for yeah. playing such a great set. Thanks for telling me the story. It's been fun watching you guys over all these years. Thanks really for your support it. throughout those years, of man. Course, yeah, man. nah. Wouldn't have done it without you. It's been Shit. very fun. I appreciate that. They are the All-American Rejects. I'm Stryker. That's been our show, everybody. See you next time. <laughs>